Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I am looking at Starlight Astronaut Rescue. Now, this is a uh, this is an interesting one. It just turned up in Steam, you know, really cheap. It's basically a twenty-minute adventure, but it's actually supposed to be a precursor to uh, the Starlight MMO, which is an educational MMO developed with NASA. I mean, NASA. I think their main contribution is to contribute some of their models and designs that they've talked about. Uh, it's obviously got some money from various educational charities like uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and uh, other... I mean, I think it's an interesting concept because we've seen the Kerbal Space Program has been hugely successful in teaching people actual, you know, scientific... Uh, scientific gay stuff. This is the MNRV, the Minerva, the Mars... I don't know, something roving vehicle? The Mars Martian New Roving Vehicle, the Martian Nuclear Roving Vehicle. Uh, it's huge. I'm just going to take. A, I know the objectives there, but I can't help but feel I want to walk around and. I I'm just having played Kerbal. I'm trying to figure out how they actually launched something this size because this is ginormous. It looks very good at roving across Mars, and if you're going to be on Mars, you want to have. A rover that will carry you for hundreds of miles and you can live with you know you don't want to have something where you have to go 10 miles and then come back because you've run out of oxygen right I mean the the lunar rover it was constrained by how far it could go because they had they could only go so far uh, they had the return distance had to be something they could walk in the amount of air their spacesuits had so uh, but this would have its own oxygen supply and I have to say, presuming that this was a pressurized environment, these, you know, pistons or whatever, or these hydraulic systems must be pretty strong to hold this thing shut against atmospheric pressure. But yeah, this is uh, an interesting place. Oh uh, uh, yeah, I like the fact that despite I'm a hot being a highly trained astronaut. Hello, Commander. Well, that Charlie situation is locked down. Okay. I simply said, yeah, you could keep doing that. Or if you want to find out where our solar array crashed on Deimos, we could use that instead. He calmed down right after that. Anyway, the next time he grabs a chimera, he'll check the airlock seal. <laughs> <laughs> totally get sudden, it. Look at this. Scanners are catching a magnetic field anomaly somewhere near here. <gasps> Let's move out there and take some reading. It's the... Get the field tent out of the locker and we'll set it up outside. Okay, field tent out. Yeah, as I said, despite being a highly trained astronaut, they still think that the lockers need to have the word locker written all over them. Here's a field tent. I like the fact that it has this little uh, code panel on there because you don't want the locals to be stealing it. You know, lock it down, Martian okay. locals. Are you ready? Let's move out. We're Let's move to. out. Pop the hatch, please. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. And there he goes. We're going to set up a rave in the desert. Obviously. I'm going to get oh, lucky. Man, this thing is heavy. Back on Earth, I wouldn't even be able to lift this thing. Nice way of pointing out that uh, Mars only has less than half of Earth's gravity. There we go. Uh, walking animation needs a little tweaking there, but I'm sure the guys behind this right, have this the technology. Let's drop the tent over there. Yes, sir. Ooh, another bit of Martian Mars exploration technology. And what's this? He's got some magic trick in this box here. Or maybe it's Marcellus Wallace's soul. No, just kidding. Hmm. Perfect. Now I'll activate the power snake. Oh, there it goes. I never get tired of watching these. That's pretty cool, I have to say. Uh... I'm not sure why you would need that, but, you know, cables that plug into each other, very cool, but if you've got a person there... Whiskey Tango Foxtrot! Commander, look! Uh-oh. Not good. That does not sound good. Let's go to the comm station to talk to him and find out what's going on. Is there anything interesting on Mars? Is that a real map? I'm picking up a lot of garble from that Vega shuttle. Copy Vega 7, please repeat. Are you okay? Copy, Minerva crew. 
Oxygen levels are running low, and navigation systems are offline. I feel all right, a bit stunned, requesting immediate medical evacuation. Commander, he needs help. If he's running off standard emergency air reserves, we don't have much time. I have a signal. We can triangulate his position. I'll call for a medevac. We'll need to craft a radiometer to locate his landing site. Okay, how do we do that? Ah, emergency supplies. So now we're getting to the rescue part of astronaut rescue. These are pretty snazzy looking spacesuits. So, uh, obviously, if you're looking to have guys that can work on Mars, you need much lighter spacesuits than what we have right now. Okay, so here we go. Open. Grab. There, we take that. And take that, maybe? Aha! Uh -huh. Excellent. And this. Okay, we got a roll of wire. Objective complete! Gather emergency supplies. Now what? Go to workbench. Ah, workbench. Yes. Let's build something. Okay, so we have an inventory. Current objective. Construct two radiometers. So, I guess we need to take wire and our display meter. And this is a radiometer! Hey, Equip here, so I'll equip one. And another one. Bing! Awesome. Now what? Okay, solve formula for crafting. What does that mean? Now, in order to track the downed astronaut, we'll need to know what signal frequency he's broadcasting at. We can then calculate wavelength using the speed of light. The wavelength is directly proportional to the length of the antenna we will use to triangulate his position. Cool! This is real physics! Ah, Hertz is the number of cycles per second this basketball bouncing once per second, blah 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 blah. It's not bouncing though, because it's oscillating. Where the strongest signal lets three bounces per second, okay. This is all... It's not bouncing, though. It's oscillating. A, ba a basketball forms, follows a completely different cycle. Okay, I understand. Scientific notation. Okay, whatever. What frequency is he broadcasting? Just give me the numbers. 100,000 million. What about billion? Hint. Count the zeros. Okay, so... What is the wavelength? a new signal. Okay, so we need to get 1.6 times 10 to the 8 hertz, right? So our wavelength is going to be that divided by that, which I have to do mentally, which is going to be 1 point... Ah, ha, 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 ha. Uh, wait a second. Uh, 12. 1 point... F wait, 2.5. No, 1.5. No, it's not 1.5. Let's try this. Equals... Okay, one, ah, you know what, reset, reset this. Yeah, I can't do basic math, pardon me. Divided by 1.6 equals 1.88. So, 1.88. Bing! Okay. But the signal appears to be changing. Oh. to recalculate. Oh, right, basic ma mathematics then. New for signal What's frequency. Signal? Okay, so 3 divided by 5.02 equals 0.6. Yeah, silly me trying to do the math in my head when I could have just used the calculator but they presented. The to be changing. We'll need to recalculate. Recalculate! Recalculate quick and astronaut's de life depends upon my ability to use a calculator. Aha! Uh -huh. 3 divided by 6. Point, oh, shoot. 6. Point oh three equals oh point five. Oh point five. Bingo. We have the data we need. We can now build antennas to triangulate his position. Excellent. We can save this individual from certain doom due to my ability with the calculator. That's uh, very important. You guys learn basic arithmetic. Okay. Install the radio on Sam One. Hey Sam. We're gonna install the radio on you. How do we do this? Install. Oh. Excellent! And look, he's got the antenna wire that I stuck on there. Install the radio on Sam too, so we're going to use this to triangulate his position as well. So these guys are now going to have to get two different signal readings so that we can triangulate. Okay! Press the screen to continue! What now? 
Ah, we have to position Sam 1 at the target. Okay, dramatic music now as well. So, whoa! Look, he's totally... Oh, good thing that... Good thing the physics aren't really amazing, otherwise I would be dead by now. Or rather, I, he wouldn't be dead because uh, he's a robot. But the person that is relying on his ability to get to the correct location uh, would probably be running out of oxygen. This uh, is an interesting looking robot, I have to say. I wonder who came up with some of these designs. I mean, really, from a telepresence point of view, it makes total sense to have a robot that has two arms and things like that. You could operate them from the the main base and the guys would never have to get out you know, unless there was something that really needed them to get out. Yeah, I was saying that astronaut, you know, spacesuits have to be made a lot lighter from the current design if you're going to go to Mars because Mars's gravity is so much heavier and the current spacesuits would be too heavy. Okay, that's objective one complete. Now can we switch to oh, Sam 2? Oh, look, he's triangulating. Ah, oh, hold on, hold on. I might, do I have to find the signal or something? Locate signal. Uh, I guess this is the button to turn. Oh, he's smaller. It's really... Oh, yeah, that's green. That must be the signal, no? Green. And that's getting yellow. So that's green, green, green. You know, this needs the ability to rotate on the spot. Objective complete. Okay. There we go. So we can now take another one and get a bearing on it. Sam 2, go and do your work. We need to get... Whoa! Yes, yes, no joyriding. No joyriding. No joyriding. This is a serious mission. You're not going to be doing any of that, uh, you know, any sideshows here. Please don't crash into the main legs of this thing. Somebody's life depends upon you. Yeah, so real... Current spacesuits weigh something like 400 pounds or whatever. The... Believe it or not, the current spacesuits that are used on the space shuttle, or not the space shuttle, the space station, by for repairs and EVA, are actually a lot heavier than the ones they took to the moon. Uh, you know, despite technology getting better, they've just got bigger and bulkier because they've only ever had to operate in zero g. The ones that had to operate on the moon obviously had to be a lot lighter because the astronauts were, in fact, dealing with a lower gravity environment. Okay, fifty meters away. Moving as fast as these little wheels can carry it. There we go. I can see the see the targeting site. I mean, technically, I should be able to get a get a triangulation point from here, but obviously, the game is working with a series of objectives. Okay, position Sam two and find the target. Uh, we're getting lighter, lighter. No, no. That's Sam 1. It must be behind those mountains, so it must be over this way somewhere. Dramatic music, dramatic music, dramatic music, dramatic music. Oh, it's getting red! Oh man, it must be... okay. I guess it must be this way somehow. Yellow, yellow... I, I'm clearly unable to do this. I guess it's getting yet more and more yellow, and it's getting red. There must be a green signal here somewhere. Green. I I'm clearly colorblind, like my dad. Come on! I can't believe I can't do this. Oh, almost. Ah, oh, there. Okay, yeah. I was just wait. I was being too impatient. Ah, oh, look at Sam looking back at me. Oh, hey, look, we've triangulated the position, therefore we know the distance. Although, to be fair, if it was a crashed spaceship, it was probably leaving a smoke trail, and we could probably use that just as easily. Great job, Commander. I'm calling the medevac. I'll meet you on site. Oh, what a dashing outfit fit you have. Flag down a medevac at the target. Okay. Can you jump? Whoa! Nice. Okay, meet at target. Flag down the medivac! Because, of course, they won't be able to see the giant white thing. Where's the target? Oh, there's the medivac! Hey, guys! We're over here! We're over here! Come and help us! That is a pretty snazzy-looking spacecraft. 
I have to say, I totally would love to fly ambulance service on Mars. I mean, you're gonna need all these things if you're gonna go to Mars forever, right? You're gonna need medical facilities, food, you're gonna need everything for survival. It's really a daunting task, and Mars 1, their sentiments are good, but, you know, boy, they're, uh, they have a long way to go to develop everything that would be needed for a fully self-sustaining system. The ISS is the closest we have right now, and it has regular breakdowns in case you haven't noticed. Okay, let's fly out, rescue this astronaut! Bask in the victory of another successful mission on Mars. I mean, it, you know, it's a it's not a sandbox like Kerbal Space Program. It's a series of predefined educational objectives inside a game-like environment. And, you know, maybe some kids, maybe that works for some kids, and I'm all for people learning via different things. This is good stuff to learn, I totally appreciate it. Nice design on the spacecraft, not that realistic just yet, but it, it's cool nevertheless, and I, I wish them a great deal of luck with this. Thank you, mission successful. Yes, the game is Starlight, and I will stress that that is the entire game. There's nothing else as far as I can tell. It's a precursor to something larger and bigger, and, you know, it's the idea is, you know, you frame some educational material inside a game about, you know, spaceships, and the kids that are interested will find out about it. I imagine there's a few parents out there that would be happy to pay the couple of dollars that it costs instead of having their kids play Battlefield Medal of Duty Honor 8. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.